Okay. So in the last class, we were discussing about uh, how we can uh, handle the exceptions in the Apex transaction. Uh, so Salesforce Apex best practices to use a, a try catch in black. Okay in your code wherever applicable especially in uh, whenever you are doing dml operations try catch block must okay so let us see today about uh, the text triggers the so trigger is a code block block of code that executes upon DML operations. Okay, so it's not a DML operation, you can say upon record events. Whenever record is getting updated by someone or uh, created, deleted. So for all these. Uh, activities events so we can uh, create the code block and that code block automatically gets ex executed so whenever that event occurs so that is a trigger so trigger events trigger events the events when the trigger gets executed before insert after insert okay before insert after insert same way for before update before delete after insert after update after delete, after and delete. Okay, so these are the trigger events we have. Trigger event. So we have total three before events and uh, four after events for undelete there is no before event okay so in salesforce what happens sequence of execution so first uh, before triggers Before insert flows, before insert flows, then after, before insert to trigger, will execute, then after, record, record, saves to the database, record gets uh, saves to the database, then after, workflow rules, then after process builders, okay, validation rules, other response rules, all are there. But here we are just uh, considering the uh, logic automation tools, okay, execution. So the actions related to before insert flows, and then before. Um, insert a trigger so then after record gets saved to the database then after reactions specific to workflow rules then um, process build reactions and then uh, after after insert uh, triggers okay after insert trigger executes immediate immediately saves to the database okay here 
then after after insert close so this is the sequence of execution so whenever um suppose account specific one process builder is there one workflow rule is there one trigger is there okay again uh, different events of on trigger is active then which one which code block executes okay first so this is the sequence okay so whenever whenever record gets saved to the database okay so the event uh, occurs before to it that is before insert before events before triggers so here i consider the insert that can be update also that can be delete also the triggers executes before record saves to the database that is before trigger the trigger that executes uh, after record saves to the database that is after trigger so based on when that uh, execution happens we have two different uh, trigger events okay so what is the purpose of the before triggers before triggers purpose is uh, in before triggers what we can do we can do to validate to validate data and to throw error message okay we'll use before triggers also to update to update same record to update same record with the values will use before triggers before it gets uh, saved to the database we can validate uh, its data or we can put something uh, that uh, that it seems missing okay in the same record we can put the data so that is the purpose of before triggers main purpose is to validate or to update the same record in after triggers what we'll do what is the purpose of after triggers to update or to make changes in any other object any other object record any other object records will use update tr after triggers and also to to update to access to access system fields system fields of standard fields and make changes in the same record that initiated initiated the trigger trigger to fire okay so we'll access the system fields data which will be populated after saving to the database system fields gets updated then we'll take the system fields data and uh, if needed we can use that system fields data and uh, make changes in the same record okay like suppose record id record id is one system field record id gets populated once the record is saved to the database and also last modified 
last modified by information created by user information so all these are system fields created date last modified date okay so this information uh, we can get once the record saved to the database in case of insert once the record is inserted then only these details populate so before insert we won't uh, uh, see these details these details won't be there so that is one purpose other one is uh, to do any actions any actions like uh, email email sending email alerts okay record update record creation um calling the batch calling calling the batch apex like that any action sending custom notification okay related to that record so these are the main reasons of using the triggers. Validate the data before it's saved to the database. We'll use before triggers to, to do changes in any other objects, whether related or non-related. Okay, so you can just uh, create the object of that uh, record type, a subject type, and then we can make the dml operation like that so these are the purposes now so how can we access the data into triggers perform these actions to validate to make changes how can we get the data so for that we have the trigger context variables trigger context variables with the help of trigger context variables we can access the data and also we can understand in which event that action needs to be performed so those trigger context variables are trigger that is insert Trigger that is uh, before, okay, like that. Trigger that is update. Trigger that is delete. Trigger that is undelete. They tell the type of event. And uh, before or after, trigger dot is before, trigger dot is after. Okay. And we have trigger dot uh, new, old, new map, old map. Okay. These give the data data on which uh, you know data to be processed during that uh, trigger execution so trigger dot new means it's a list old also list new map is a map old map is a map okay so these are the trigger context variables we frequently use uh, other than these uh, trigger dot uh, is executable is there Trigger dot size also there. So, but mostly we'll use these only. Okay. Let us see the trigger syntax, the outline of trigger. Trigger look like this trigger, trigger name on which object that object API name 
then after okay this is the black in the parameter so we need to specify the event before insert after insert before delete before update like that so which event for which event this trigger is written like that you, you need to specify so we can specify all events so uh, that is optional you can specify exact uh, event for which that uh, trigger is written that won't uh, make any you know uh, that throws any error if you specify elements so events you need to specify like that inside the parameters in the logic execution uh, to check which event uh, which action needs to be performed we'll use trigger context variables to understand the type of event okay so here you will write the code black code black to execute upon this uh, event hit let's see so in the salesforce uh, best practices we need to use a trigger handler we need to uh, write uh, one trigger for object it is the apex uh, trigger best practices we need to use trigger handler trigger handler is a class class that has uh, all the logic all the logic of the trigger okay in trigger in trigger we will call the methods while passing while passing data in the parameters in the parameters so trigger handler is a class in the class in inside the trigger we want to keep the logic as a best practice we want to keep the logic and then to execute the logic we need to call the methods from that trigger handler class defined inside the trigger handler class and uh, when calling the methods we need to pass the uh, data so that data will um, capture from the trigger context variables trigger dot new trigger dot new map like that so that we will pass to the method okay so we'll see first we'll see direct trigger creation later we'll see how we can separate the logic from the trigger okay Okay, let me log into my developer console. Trigger file file new Apex trigger name of the trigger. On account object, I'm writing the trigger here. Trigger, this is the name of the trigger. On which object? 
so on is a keyword before insert is the event when they execute the trigger uh look like i'm getting some email from your end okay i will be keeping on your you sit in a uh, you know legend area without any noise any disturbances from outside yeah okay see here so this is the outline of the trigger trigger is the keyword on is the keyword and uh, before insert is the event and uh, this is the name of the trigger so whenever trigger is created so you can see in the setup in the setup apex triggers Apex triggers. Okay. So here you can see the trigger. This is the trigger that we created. This is the API version, trigger version. And uh, when created, who created? That's it. It displays only active triggers. I have uh, created one view for that. So already there is one dupe checker. Let me disable this. Duplicate checker. Okay, no active triggers. Yeah, no active triggers on account now. So only this one, only this trigger. Let us see. Now I'm assuming one scenario. Okay, let me assume one scenario. Okay, this is the account form. This is the account form here. Account name is mandatory field. So like that, I want to make uh, one more field as mandatory. Suppose rating. Rating I want to make as mandatory field via trigger. That is the scenario I'm assuming. So account rating value, it will check. If the value is blank, it will throw the validation error message before insert. In the before insert only, it, it should check. So for that, so trigger dot uh, new means trigger dot new means all the list of records inserting based on the event. Uh, this uh, trigger dot new works. Trigger dot new won't available in all cases in all events only in. Uh, uh, whenever new thing is happening, means record is being created, record is uh, being updated with the new value. Okay. So that time new mostly, trigger that new will be there to refer to the new data, newly inserted data, newly updated data. Okay. That's list of new rec new data records. Trigger at old means uh, uh, records with uh, old values. In the update operation, old will be there. In insert, no old. In update, old will be there. Trigger at old means records with old values. Okay. So uh, just to check the details, more details on uh, these uh, new old. Trigger, trigger context variables mainly okay that is important so here 
I am referring to the records uh, um, which are being inserted, which are being inserted uh, using the trigger dot new. That's it. So these are the list of records being inserted. I am uh, I am taking into I am taking into a list list of account inserted records okay records about to insert accounts uh, about to insert okay now in my uh, this variable this has a uh, all the records about to insert, about to get insert. Now, for all records about to get inserted, I am checking its value. I am checking one after one, all the values. All the records, I am taking one after one. So, bulkification. The code should work for all records. Bulkification using for loop list, what we are doing, bulkification of code. Your code should work for one record insertion. Your code should work for multiple records insertion. That is another best practice of triggers. Okay. So that's the reason I am taking. I'm not considering one record. I'm considering all records. Whether one record inserts, 10 records insert, same trigger dot name. Clear? Okay, okay. So my code check uh, any record, any number of records being inserted, all uh, uh, number of records taken into this list. So that list, uh, using that list, I am iterating one after one. If uh, if a dot rating, I am checking a dot rating. A dot rating equal to null equal to null if a dot rating equal to null then a dot okay so how to throw the error message Account name. No, not account name actually. I need ID actually, but ID won't be there in insert operation. That's why I'm thinking. Oh. Uh, actually, what we need to do, we need to throw the error message. We need to throw the error message to the record, but record is uh, not created yet. So that is the issue. So for that, uh, some logic is there. A dot add error. Let's see if it, this works. Add error. Rating should be and selected. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. 
see what happens so automatically trigger gets uh, active so no need to do anything whenever it is created it is active only so that's why in this view it appeared okay so if you select other view all triggers uh, there will be multiple triggers created okay so okay. this is one trigger and this is another trigger if you expand uh, you know it's uh, i think uh, so many other triggers also there okay so these are all uh, from different packages not created by user uh, so from app exchange package packages i installed that's why these triggers also installed by those packages not by user defined okay so active triggers now let us see creating a record view i updated actually that's the reason actually this should be the first view okay and then i'm trying to insert rating should be selected okay it's working so that is the trigger action actually so let me modify this trigger so your code should work for uh, multiple records right so for that what i will do instead of doing like this directly i will i will define another list okay accounts with issues accounts with issues new list for only accounts with issues i will throw the error message the rest of everything needs to be uh, inserted successfully so I'll just um, keep this so in this list I will add the records with issues okay yeah. so rate rating is blank that's why I added to this list then after on that list, I will perform the operation. Okay. Now this has all the records with issues. I'm looping over it. So here I need to throw the validation error. Add error. So this is a method which throws the error message. Select, select value for rating. Okay, select value for rating. That's it. So this is the trigger. So here what I did. I have with the help of trigger context variable trigger dot new. So I have taken all the records inserting. Okay, here the event is before insert. Before event uh, um before insert is happening so this all this block executes so nothing saved to the database you are trying to create the record but that is not goes to database due to this triggers restricting 
so this trigger is checking the data being inserted okay records with issues separated for all those records with issues i'm throwing the error message okay if no issues nothing will happen let's see so record i am creating abc 90 rating i'm not selecting save select a value for rating okay i'm selecting the rating save phone number is mandatory this can be by the validation error though validation uh, is there active first uh, before insert uh, executed then after validation the sequence of execution okay now no issue record is saved successfully clear okay now let us see so making a handler for this create the fx class version the trigger handler so that is the name of the handler now so i need to execute this i need to i need to execute this from here public static void method name call trigger method here i need to execute now what i need trigger dot new information i need trigger dot new information i need okay so that is a list list of account records. list of account records about inserting accounts in the place of record and new whatever i passed that parameter will replace here so that trigger dot new i'll pass while calling comment. okay so here this takes one parameter that is list of records list of records to inserting or updating that will pass from here while calling so this method I need to to call start method. I need name of the class. This is the class, and this is the method, and it is taking one parameter. Okay. So here it is expecting list of records. In trigger, we have only trigger context variables. Trigger dot new. First save the class and then save the trigger. So this is the trigger handler class. Now let us see again. Oh. 
ओके सेम पावर ट्रिगर क्लियर क्लियर सो सेम वे वन ट्रिगर फॉर ऑब्जेक्ट मल्टीपल हैंडलर मेथड्स सो डी इवेंट्स सो फॉर दैट व्हाट यू विल डू यू विल पुट ऑल द events before insert after insert before update after update okay before delete what should happen after delete what should happen okay and then after undelete what should happen So these are the seven events only seven events so for each event what should which method should call so we'll have different uh, methods okay in the handler so for insert this should happen for update this should happen uh, when deleting this should check like that we'll have different methods and here we will check uh, the type of event if uh, if trigger dot uh, is before and trigger dot is uh, insert do this okay same way we can have multiple uh, if blocks in the um, um trigger so for each event for before update we'll have separate block for before delete we'll have separate block and we'll call the different methods okay so when use the trigger handler we can handle the sequence of execution if we have multiple uh, uh, you know couple of code in the trigger then you cannot control the which code to execute first so using this method this process trigger handler process you can control the sequence of execution of triggers okay so this is the best practice salesforce recommends this process so trigger creation so we can uh, directly write the logic inside the trigger but that is not recommended by salesforce we need to create the class uh, to handle trigger events and then we need to pass the parameters to that method that's it so for that we will take the uh, static methods so that with the class name uh, we can call the methods okay yeah any confusion here yeah in trigger handlers i got confused but i will practice uh, if i get any doubt i will come back to you okay yeah so so whatever the logic we executed in trigger that logic i removed from trigger and kept inside a method that's it okay this logic okay. i written in the trigger directly okay okay uh ex additionally what i did i created a method with parameters that parameter type should be list because here um, this logic executes um, on the any list that's why parameter should be list so that list i am passing from here here uh, list of records identified by the trigger dot new trigger dot new means list of new records trigger dot old means list of old data records with the old data Okay. New map means uh, not only records with the record IDs. 
it's a map ids and the data that is a map new map of records okay but in insert before insert no map will be there are certain conditions effects uh, figure context uh, variables if you see the list uh, okay in which case which context variables available if you see the new the records in in which events it appear insert update and delete okay map appears before update after insert after update after delete old appears you can refer old only in update delete old map you can refer only in delete and update operations like that we are inserting here uh, in our example we are inserting that's why new we refer whether that is before or after for insertion new will be there whether that is update or not uh, before or after if it is update operation new will be there like that to refer the updated data to refer the inserted records to refer the records about to insert we'll use the new only trigger dot new okay okay yeah go through this uh, and you will get okay okay sir. I'll share the recordings, however. Okay. So I'm in the process of uh, preparing the, the folder. Okay. okay. I'll I'll share today to your email. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no, no, sir. So same uh, whatever we discussed uh, applicable to all the events. Yeah. So we just saw how we can uh, create the triggers and uh, you know how we can handle the purpose of triggers, context variables, those things. You can practice different scenarios, okay? And okay. let me know. So if we are facing any issue, we'll see in depth. Okay. okay. Those things. So because we we need to discuss so many concepts uh, going forward. So okay. every concept it takes um, so more more time actually to discuss. So I'm making sure to you know discuss the main points and uh, you know proceeding with the next concept. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll see about uh, apex testing. How we can okay. uh, achieve the code coverage over uh, you know uh, apex okay. code and uh, so that how we can deploy the code uh, to the uh, different orgs so because uh, in salesforce we use different uh, sandboxes okay okay so let me show the sandbox tomorrow we'll see uh, this thing So these are uh, SFDX uh, commands uh, I'm using here. Uh, so Salesforce developer experience commands. Okay. Thank you. 
just a moment. I'm checking for the comment. No, let's see here. So DX config set target equal to okay, let's see. No file found it. I'm free to scratch to finish. So, so for that, it is expecting a few more configurations. That's fine. Uh, for now, let me use this. Head. No, this directly does not continue where it is with the phone. Okay. Let me log in now directly. This moment. Okay. okay.
professionals not done. It is taking time actually. Just a moment. Actually, that uh, verification link is uh, not received on my emails. Okay. okay. So okay. By tomorrow, I'll make sure that is uh, uh, accessible. So we'll see tomorrow. Creating the sandbox and uh, so the why Apex code coverage is required. Those okay. 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 Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. So that's about today, Prashant. Thank you. Bye. Bye.